Welcome to one cup of tea with the Rev. Well, how's it going? It is a bit of a wet and a blustery morning out there. The leaves are falling off the trees. But we have reason to be rejoiced and be glad. We have reason to be excited. This is the day that the Lord has made. Okay, 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 Nigel, give over. We're sick of listening to you going on about how wonderful it is. But it's true. Folks, it's true. Do you know what excites me? This is what excites me. Every day you wake up, every day you wake up is a sign of God's grace extended to you. It's a gift of his grace. Yeah. Every day is a blessing. And you will find that people in the most extreme of conditions are able to go and say, I will bless the Lord. Jeremiah sitting out in the rubble of Jerusalem could go and say, Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning new mercies I see. I love that. I love the concept of that. Job, going through serious illness and personal loss and pain, goes and says, I'm not going to curse God. Oh, no. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. And so he's someone who actually just goes and reconciles himself to the conditions he lives in. That's amazing. That is amazing. So we can find ourselves in all sorts of circumstances and difficulties. And those circumstances and difficulties are real. A circumstance is a circumstance. The difficulties that you may find yourself in, they are difficulties that are real. Be they physical, mental, emotional, or even spiritual. But I love this. I love this in Psalm 16. This is what the psalmist goes and says. This is what David says. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I will not be shaken. Just think about that. Because he is at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Now what that does for me is it brings up the question... What is my understanding of Jesus Christ? What is my understanding of the Lord? During the week I was asked that question. Well, I had made the statement first that Jesus Christ, we are going to get to know who Jesus is. A person once said to me, but how can you be sure that you know? And I said, from the Bible. And they said, but how can you know from the Bible? Another person once said to me, you can't be sure that is real. I said, why not? I said, so what's your argument then? If you don't believe that this could be real, what's your proof that it isn't real? And he goes to me, you can't be sure that it isn't real either. Oh. So that moves into a space of faith. So I went and gave them a challenge. And I'd like to give that challenge to you, but I'll give it to you in a few moments. Psalm 16, first up, goes and says, Therefore, my heart is glad, my tongue rejoices. And I love this, I love this line. My body also will rest secure. Oh, yes, I love that. Now, when we come into the presence of the Lord, our bodies can rest secure. Our hearts are glad. Our tongues are confessing Jesus is Lord. 
and we can rest secure. But it brings to mind, what is the question? The question I said is, what is your concept of Jesus Christ? What is your understanding of him? And that's going to bring me to the last little piece. Because I believe if we understand who Jesus really is, then we will have this. And I love the last verse in this psalm as well. It goes and says, You have made known to me the path of life, and you fill me with joy in your presence. You know, we can know that joy right now. It isn't that it's that we must wait to heaven till we're in heaven. No, we are in the presence of the Lord right now. Psalm 139 goes, says, Where can I flee from your presence? And so right now we can be filled with the joy. Oh, I love that. I love that. When it comes to joy, I just love it. Oh, anyway, the challenge. I want to finish with this. I put it to these guys. I said, lads, I said, when it comes to the Gospel of John, what excites me so much about the Gospel of John is this. Jesus had 12 disciples. Out of those 12 disciples, he had three buddies, Peter, James, and John. And out of those three buddies, he had one really close mate, and his name was John. And so when we read John's Gospel, we get an insight, an insight into Jesus that the other Gospels don't have because of that personal relationship, that closeness between John and Jesus. And John, at the end of his book, makes a big claim. And I would challenge you, challenge you, if you're someone in your Christian walk and you just feel like you're going through the desert right now, I challenge you. If you're someone and you're on a mountaintop with Jesus right now, I challenge you. If you are someone and you're just going, is Jesus even real? Does the, the, I mean, this God stuff that you're talking about, can I even believe that? I challenge you. If you're someone you're going to say, I have no faith in God at all. I have nothing to do with this Christianity dark. Then I challenge you. And here's the challenge I'm going to put to you. Because I love John's confidence in this. John in chapter 20. And here's the challenge I'm going to put to you. John in chapter 20 says this. I just look it up so as I'm reading it correctly. I challenge you. Do this. John goes and says in chapter 20 and verse 30 about his book. About the Gospel of John. Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples. But these are written down that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. And that by believing you may have life in his name. So the challenge is, read the Gospel of John for yourself and go say God if you're really real reveal yourself to me through these pages because John believes and I love the confidence of this John believes that if you go and read his gospel you will come to a point of faith you will believe in the son of God that's why he wrote it and then you will be able to go and say, My heart is glad. My tongue rejoices. My body rests secure. And I am filled with the joy of being in the presence of the Lord. Woo! Well, Thursday. Have a wonderful one. Cup on tea till I talk to you next time. As for me, I'm just going to chill here in the presence of God. Have a good one.